results of the oatmeal pickup and the Dysons, which, I mean, there's still a little speck of oatmeal right there under my toe. Can you take and say, okay, I'm going to buy the shark because the Dyson left a line of oatmeal? No. I mean, if you really personally feel that you are better off with a Dyson, I would recommend a Dyson more to somebody who's not going to maintain, my goodness, this lighting. I'm about to pick something. Maybe that's going to help out. Um, a Dyson, like I said, they're minimal maintenance. When you talk about the filtration, they are, it, with this one, it has the um, radial root cyclone technology. So it is very nice. It is very powerful. It's kind of higher pitch whininess. The Shark does as well. But the one thing that I like about the Shark compared to the Dyson is when you take the Dyson, you have a two-foot hose when it's on the back of the machine. And this is pretty much how the hose is going to be all the time because the vacuum's always going to want to tug along when you pull the hose. They show a 16-foot cleaning reach. You're really never going to get that unless you have something blocking this vacuum from following you because it's always going to want to follow you around because the suction's, you know, strong on it. It is. Um, so it is kind of a pain in the butt. You can't really use the hose. Now, on the Shark, I like, first of all, you press this button once and you can pull up. So that's really nice. You press it and it automatically releases. You don't have to have two hands to do it. Just press the button and pull. The Shark, I'd say, probably has a three, three and a half foot stretch hose. So it is a um, wire reinforced hose because it is, um, what do you want to say it? It is a powered lift away. So the vacuum is able to be used as a canister with power to the power nozzle. So there is electrical wiring running through this. And it also does stretch, as you can see. But the thing that I like about this compared to the Dyson is you have a longer foot of reach. This is not going to fight you when you're trying to use this to clean because the Shark is more portable. You can detach it, for one. But another, um, you can actually take this vacuum and you can reach further with it. This hose easily slinks around whereas the Dyson it kind of has that suction recoil so it's kind of a pain in the butt to use so what I'm trying to say is even if which the shark does have the same a similar problem but you're going to get further with the hose being in its shortest position compared to the Dyson being in its shortest position the shark even though it's nice to have the suction or your hose po or put on the bottom, the shark leans forward quite a bit. I mean, you can hold it back this far off the ground, let go of it, and it leans forward. It just naturally leans forward where the Dyson actually kind of leans further back. So when you pull this vacuum around, the shark, when you pull on the hose, it naturally just follows you around as well. The hose is higher off the ground than the Dyson is. It The Dyson still, it will follow you. The shark will follow you around too, especially when you have the wand taken off because the vacuum has a low center of gravity. The Dyson really doesn't. And these wheels, if you try and put it on the rear and push away, there you can only go so far before you end up pushing and it releases. That's the one thing that I hate about the Dysons now. You try and push this to another room or something, you go too fast, and it releases by itself. So, I'll just show you. You push too fast, and it just decides to recline. So, it is kind of a pain. The hose thingy can get in the way sometimes. When I was doing that, this sometimes likes to pull up. So, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Whereas the shark, I mean, you can go as fast as you want with this thing. It's not going to pull over. You actually have to put your foot on. Even pulling this far back, it'll go right back forward. You actually have to pull it back even further. 
The Dyson doesn't get underneath the couch easily either. The shark can go pretty far underneath the couch. The Dyson can't. You can stick this little, I mean, it goes maybe an inch under the couch, but you can stick these little ends underneath. So, but it still isn't going to get as far underneath as the shark does. But overall cleaning performance, I would definitely have to say the shark, to me, wins. I don't use my Dyson almost ever. I really don't. The shark, it's very easy to maneuver around. It swivels. It pivots. It's really easy to turn. Whereas the Dyson... I mean, it turns easier to the left than it does to the right. And when you do turn too fast, the head actually comes off the ground. So, like this. Oh. Like that. So, the Dyson actually does kind of turn off the ground, which, of course, I'm being a little rough with it. But when you try and vacuum bare floors with this Dyson... It sucks right down to the floor. You cannot swivel it. You can't swivel it. On hardwood even, even with the cracks in the floor, it sucks itself right down to the car or to the floor. You can't use it, especially on low profile carpet, like an industrial or like a indoor outdoor. Um, we have carpeting in our kitchen, which is kind of really old styling, but we do. You can't use the Dyson in there. The Shark, first of all, it has wheels on the front base plate, so that's nice. There is a little bit of hair in there as well. But you can actually adjust this down. So that's really nice. You can actually open these air vents on the side of the vacuum, or on the side of the handle, and you can allow, allow airflow to flow through that so it doesn't suck right down to the floor or whatever you're vacuuming for a plushier style carpet. I've never heard any people complain with this machine you can even see it shows hard floor. I don't know why this camera on this phone won't adjust. My goodness. I've never had such a hard time. Carpet low pile, thick carpet area rug. So, like I said, you know, this is, it's so much easier to use the Shark. I'm a big Shark fan with this machine. I really didn't think it would clean as well as it does, but it really just rakes the carpet. It really cleans in between the fibers, whereas the Dyson, I just feel like it glides right across the top. It doesn't actually deep down clean. It doesn't really stand up the pile. So, I mean, of course, the decision's ultimately yours. People are always going to be diehard Dyson fans. There really isn't much of a shark fan club or anything like that. And all the Dyson DC-65s are created equal. The difference between this and the multi-floor, or just the Dyson Ball multi-floor, the yellow top one, it's the same machine, but they cut these grooves out of the bottom where you saw that um, trailing the oatmeal. The shark has it too. The shark has these little groovy thingies at the bottom of it. There's some hair, but there's also some hair in the Dyson as well. It has some grooves there too. So... Of course, like I said, the choice is ultimately yours. People are always going to be diehard Dyson fans. For me, the Shark, even when the filters are dirty, it still cleans better. To me, I feel like the house is getting cleaner, better. It's easier to use. I don't mind getting the curtains or something like that where the cats like to go in between the window and the curtains and they just string that hair from their Persian-y furs or whatever. The Dyson, it pretty much came with no tools. The Dyson has a crevice combination dusting brush. Of course, you can see the Shark has the same thing. The bristles are better quality on this. And it also has a better um, upholstery tool that articulates. But anyway, so that is my review of my Dyson and Shark. If I end up not posting this portion of the video, I guess it's kind of worthless because if I don't post it, you're not going to hear this. Um, but I cut the other video short because it was going to hit the 15-minute mark. But if you have any questions, ask me. Let me know. I'll try and answer the best that I can. And thanks for watching.